Tron Legacy in 3D. I should obviously start by saying that I have not actually watched the original Tron. I haven't really been able to find it in time to watch. So I can't really draw any comparisons and I only vaguely know what happened in it. For those who are watching this who also haven't watched it, basically Jeff Bridges makes Tron, the grid virtual reality world. I think other stuff happens as well. I've heard something about a master program which in its quest for perfection becomes a bit of a dictator and that's kind of what happens here so so much for originality but anyway we open to a really obviously CGI de-aged Jeff Bridges delivering exposition to his young son Sam in 1989. He disappears and 21 years later, present day, Sam goes to find his father one last time. This is after he takes revenge on his father's company for turning from a torrent sharing site into Microsoft. It really isn't a secret that S son of Sam, son, Sam the son, enters the world of Tron and he finds that there is again a bit of a dictator running things. The whole dictator aspect is fairly well done. There's some really obvious imagery that makes us think of Hitler and the Third Reich. The whole idea of achieving perfection and eliminating those that do not live up to the ideal. And I think that's about all I should say before I go into any spoilers. So, there is a bit of a problem though that part of the whole thing with it trying to create this perfect world, the idea is that Jeff Bridges' character, Kevin, created this program in order to make Tron, the world, perfect. And we thus have a kind of Frankenstein thing going on, some of those themes. You have the creation rising up against its master. You have human arrogance leading to downfall. And that's where it gets that's where it gets a little troublesome because there's actually something else in this involving human arrogance, and it's actually kind of seen as a good thing. There's this whole f concept of I don't know, a cure. The line is right there in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler. Something that will change everything, you know, science, I think he mentions religion, medicine, everything. This is never explained in the movie. In addition to going against the theme that human arrogance leads to downfall. And it frankly never amounts to anything. It's a plot point that just does not go anywhere. The core here is Sam and Kevin, the father-son meetup, you know, after all this time. And this emotional core, you know, makes the constant CGI 
not take, not steal the focus entirely. This film is a visual feast. It looks amazing. The production design is just mind blowing. I haven't really seen a lot of how it looked in the original, but there are some that say that this kind of updates the look, and I would agree with that from what I have seen. A few clips. You won't necessarily like it, but, you know, it is like you see it in the trailer. There is surprisingly little 3D. I would say most of this is not in 3D. There is no 3D outside of the world of Tron, but even in Tron, which is where we spend most of the movie, there is not that much. It actually was to the point where I wasn't really noticing when it kicked into 3D, and I would say this is intentional. This is probably the one where it draws the least attention to itself, the 3D. There is very little of, you know, throwing stuff at the viewer and that kind of thing. So if that's what you're looking for, this ain't it. The action is incredible. I have heard some say that it's a bit too reminiscent of the new Star Wars films and The Matrix, especially sequels kinda true, okay, but I still thought it was very exciting, and at times creative. Got acrobatics, martial arts, vehicular chases, and the weapons. You've probably already seen the discs that they throw, and then there's also that the light cycles, or whatever they're called, those are gonna sell a lot of toys, have this trail of energy behind them, and if you touch that energy, you perish. The deaths are nicely done. It's a kind of... If you've watched the Animatrix shorts, I don't remember the exact one. I think it might be Program. It's the one where they, you know, things get killed, and they die as you know, a stream of code. It's kind of like that. They come apart in that nice kind of clean PG-13 way that doesn't really annoy us because, you know, normally we'd want to see more, but it has that kind of effect, you know. We can tell that something bad just happened. There is, there are a lot of effects in this. And... If you don't like that aspect, this really isn't for you. The overall thing is basically the father and son meeting up again, and then this struggle against a totalitarian regime, and neither aspect are the best execution we've ever seen in a movie. I could very quickly name others that I'd have to say the first that springs to mind is equilibrium for the whole bringing down a totalitarian regime in a stylish and fun film, you know. One thing that really kind of bothered me was we never really see a real resistance group or like we, we never find out there's a lot of things we know, never really find out, like... Yeah, this is gonna go in the spoiler section, never mind. It just doesn't have as much of an effect, because we're really only following a few people. There's Sam, there's Kevin, there's Kevin's... creation. Clue, or Clue 2, I understand there was a clue in the original. I guess they got a new clue. Maybe they can solve the riddle now. Anyway. And then there is... Quora, if that's how you pronounce it. Or just Q. 
Olivia Wilde. Hot. She is... I shouldn't say why, but in this she is a very innocent, enthusiastic type, and it's very endearing. You can't quite help but just really like her. She's almost like a child. And those are about the main characters. One character I really didn't like was Castor. It's basically Michael Sheen doing an impersonation of David Bowie on Speed. It's I guess eccentric is the nicest word I could use about it. I think if he didn't chew quite as much scenery as he does, I wonder how CGI tastes, it wouldn't be as irritating. Anyway, not everyone is going to hate him. That might more or less be it. The plot isn't that understandable, comprehensible. I didn't understand everything in this, and I've heard this said by people who watched both movies, too. And I've kind of heard that the first one doesn't always make perfect sense either. The script could definitely have needed just a little bit more touching up. I will say, I was able to follow it overall without having watched the first one, without knowing exactly what... In fact, without knowing anything about the first one. All I knew before I went into it was the whole grid and virtual reality thing. Everything else I read after watching it. You can still understand it. This is mainly going to be for the people wanting a fun action film that looks good. The title is nice then in that it tells the people who are old enough to remember the original that yes, this is indeed related to the one from 82, I think it was. And it's a kind of cool sounding word for the people who are too young to remember it and to big a word for aforementioned young people to realize that it is in fact a sequel to a movie that they probably wouldn't like the quality of the effects of. I can imagine that fans of the original are actually not going to like this that much. I've only read about this, so please don't decapitate me if I get the names wrong. Yori or something like that. Laura and Yori, something like that, do not appear. Not unless they were an unnamed extra somewhere. Jeff Bridges, as Kevin, does not do that much in this. It's more Sam, you know, the young guy, you know, to attract the young audience. And there is very little Bruce Box Leitner, a.k.a. Tron. Does it bother anyone else that Tron apparently refers to a character, the arcade video game, and the overall virtual world? Or is the virtual world just called the grid? Anyway. I will say, on the acting front, everyone does pretty well. Jeff Bridges, de-aged as Clue 2, is a relatively shallow role, but he does well at it. Good energy. And he's good as Kevin, too, although I wish they didn't give him quite as much youthy dialogue. In fact, I heard someone compare his portrayal in, of Kevin in this as somewhat similar to, you know, the Big Lebowski, and, yeah, mm-hmm. Wilder, Olivia Wilde, that's her name, does pretty well. 
I hadn't seen her on anything else. Now I might. She does really well. I mean, some 20-somethings, when doing, you know, a naive character, are gonna screw it up and are gonna make us just hate them. And she really doesn't. She just really does well. And this was the first time that I saw Garrett Headland, I think his name is. He does very well. He wasn't pitch perfect in the emotional scenes, but he did do well enough, you know. It's not quite like, well, it's nowhere near Hayden Christensen in, you know, Star Wars. He does reasonable enough. And he certainly does well in the action. I thought the ending was very nice. It doesn't really resolve absolutely everything. But it was an appropriate ending, and at the end, we get the moral, and it's very important, very smart, and fairly well delivered. Yeah, that would be it. So, bottom line, if you're a fan of the first, think about it before you go to. If you're like a child or preteen, you may not understand this. I'm not saying that as an insult. I didn't understand everything myself. But if you can't follow the overall, you're really not going to get anything out of it. If you are you know, at least a teenager, maybe 20, at least, and you're just looking for some easy to get into action. As long as you don't turn your brain off all the way, I would say there is a chance you'll enjoy this. That's pretty much, I was in the last category. This isn't really incredibly smart sci-fi. It's fun. So, yeah. That was my spoiler-free review of Tron Legacy in 3D. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.